Okay, this is the M1 paper from January 2021. We're going to have a look at question number one, and a quick look at it shows that it's uh, kinematics. We've got uh, vertical motion under gravity, so that's going to be constant acceleration, which means we can use all our SUVAT formulae. Uh, let's have a look at the information they've given us for part A. It says a small stone is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 20 from point O, which is five meters above the ground. Stone is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity. Find the speed of the stone when it's two meters above the ground and more information than that. Right, let's get started with what I like to do with these is to draw a quick diagram out. So we've got this stone basically doing that motion there where this is at a height of five meters above the ground at the point where it's thrown u is equal to 20 we obviously know that acceleration is going to be minus g and we want the speed of the stone at the instant when it is two meters above the ground so we want the speed of stone there or perhaps more importantly that from the initial point, that's three meters away and that's gonna be minus three meters when I do my SUVA. So you can hopefully see the benefit of drawing one of these diagrams out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write down SUVA and if it's a traditional one, then I'm expecting to have four of those variables being in operation and um, knowing three of them and having to work out the fourth one. Uh, if I've got motion that goes up and down, I always like to say which way I'm taking as being positive. So I'm taking upwards as being positive. And I'm basically considering the journey from there to there. So from there to there, what do I have? Um, S is going to be minus three meters. Then if I take upwards as being positive, it's ended up three meters below where it started off from, but it started with a speed of 20 and 20 being plus 20 because it was thrown upwards. Um, what do they want? They want the speed of the stone at that stage. So V is what I'm looking for. Um, acceleration is minus G or minus 9.8, whichever you prefer to write down. And time, no interest in time at this moment, uh, which means I've got exactly what I wanted, four variables, three of which I've got, and I'm looking for the fourth one. In this case, I'm looking for V. So the formula that connects S, U, V, and A is V squared equals U squared plus two AS. And we can just substitute everything in now. So V squared is going to be equal to 20 squared plus two lots of minus 9.8 and minus three there. Substitute all that in and square root it. And we get that V works out to be equal to 21.4 or rather 21 meters per second. We should only ever do these questions to two significant figures if I'm taking G as being minus 9.8 because then that is to two significant figures. So that's part A. Part B says, find the total time between the instant when it's projected and the instant when it first touches the ground. Okay, so what that now means is that my journey becomes that this time. So S is gonna be minus five this time. I can still keep U as being 20. I can still keep A as being minus 9.8 and I'm interested in T, so uh, let's go and do SUVAT for that second part. So for part B, SUVAT gives me, as we just said, this is question number one, so it's not going to be too complicated. S is minus five, U is 20. V, I'm not interested in V now, it's a, it's a different journey that I've got here. Um, A is minus 9.8 and T is the point at which I'm interested in. So 
as I said last time, four variables, only one of which is missing. So what formula connects S, U, A, and T? Well, I hope you know this one. It's one of the more commonly used ones. S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. And so what we're going to do is substitute everything in there. So we're going to get minus 5 is equal to 20 T. Uh, and then it might be worth you just learning this, that half of minus 9.8 is minus 4.9. It comes up all the time when we're doing it. You can just put it in, obviously, if you need to. Right, this is going to turn into a quadratic equation. So 4.9 T squared minus 20 T minus 5 equals 0. Don't be trying to um, factorise or anything else like that. This is obviously a quadratic formula question. So I'm going to get T works out to be minus B, which is 20, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times 4.9 times 5, all over 2A, all over 9.8. I'm not going to spend any more time doing this question Um yeah, you'll get two values, and we are going to take the positive value, which works out to be 4.318. But as we said just a second ago, we're only going to take it to two significant figures. Uh, just as a quick aside, the negative one, don't need to know this at all, but the negative one would be the equivalent of minus time going backwards if we actually had this complete journey here. So that's why you get a negative time. You get a time before our start off points, and that would be how many seconds back that would be if we'd had that as a complete model of the journey. Doesn't mean anything to us. We're not going to have that sort of thing. We can just ignore the fact that we've got the negative time and concentrate on the positive one. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. That's question number one.